Welcome back to another one guys. We're going to spend a little time in the shop today. I've got a piece of hardwood on the lathe here. We're going to try and come up with something a little different for a duck call. Not sure, we're quite sure what I'm going to end up with, but let's take some wood off and find out. We got it all rounded up. Now we're going to square up the ends. got it round and we got the ends trued up we're gonna try and do some shape I'm not quite sure exactly what we're gonna do yet but we'll see how this goes What I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm just winging the shape. I'm trying to come up with something a little different. As I'm moving the tool, normally I like to move my whole body with the tool. But I'm trying to keep it in a certain spot. So you see I'm hooking the back of the rest. I got my thumb on top and I'm using my thumb to work the tool back and forth. My other hand is just steady in the tool, keeping it level. My thumb is what's moving it back and forth. That way I can get a little more precise with what I want to do with it. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I've got the lanyard groove cut here. I've got a bit of a slope so it's lower here and curves upward here. What I want to try and do is I want to try and keep on this hump right here, I want to try and keep it so that it flows. So it goes down, up, and as it meets down on here, I want this edge to flow nicely with the next edge. So you have a gap, but they still meet up. Theoretically. Okay, I dug the lanyard groove a little deeper. What you may not be able to see is the call is still too big. I like a smaller call. So by digging the lanyard groove deeper, 
that allows me to take a little more off of here and a little more off of here and make the whole unit smaller. We lost the downward slope here because by making by making it smaller, I got rid of that. I got rid of the rise, so now we're gonna put that back in there. As you start to take them off, you turn it. And it puts the round back on it. Now I just gotta put a little bit more on it so that when it comes back up, it'll come back down and meet up with the other one. I may end up bringing this one down a little bit too, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we still have it, it comes back up again and it goes back down to the smaller portion here. That's where the insert's gonna go. I'm gonna work on the mouthpiece a little bit now. I still think it's a little too big, but once I, once I start working on a mouthpiece here, it'll probably take a little on a little bit smaller shape. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round it over. You wanna make it comfortable in your mouth, right? So you wanna round this over, no sharp edges. I'm just using this tool here to open up the barrel a little bit so the air flows in nice and smooth. Alright, that's not too bad. So, so I can get a little deeper into there, what I'll do is I'll loosen this up in a minute. I'll move it down because the mandrel's in the way. But I'd still like to put a little more of an arc in here from here down and a little thinner in the middle. Okay, now something I've never done before is put an actual, put a nice rounded lip on the end. Normally I will just leave them like this and or tape them down just a little bit more, but we're gonna see if we can make that happen. camera's probably not picking up what's coming off of there, but I can see what's coming off. I'm trying to keep it so that I can keep the lip on the end. Okay, so 
so that's not too bad. So this is going to be an all wooden call. I'm not going to put any bands on it. So you can see I got the curve there. This is coming down. I don't know if I should put a ring on there or not. A groove in there. But Okay, so after looking at this a little further, I've come to the conclusion it's too long. The mouthpiece is too big. So we're going to start taking some off. This mouthpiece is going to go. I'm going to start a new one back here. tip where the tool is cutting I'm not looking there I'm looking at the top because it's easier for me to see what's coming off at the top than it is where the tool is So that's not too bad. So what I might do is now that I'm doing it, like I say, I like to do things on the fly. 
So what I've got, and you can't see it here, it'll be better when I take the camera off the tripod. Come up here, I've got a line. I can see the line here, and it goes up to the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step that down a little bit. So now I'll have an arc come up, and it'll come up a little bit more. Alright, so I got it comes down, there's a stop, and it goes up on a slope up towards the lip, and then it levels out, and then we have the lip. So I'm going to take a little bit more out of here, just to give it a little more of an arc. I got that the way I want it. Now I'm going to go back to the mouthpiece because I got to fix it because remember I shortened it up. Alright guys, I'll show you what we got going on here. So there's the, uh, the bevel. You can see it's got the arc in it. Lay in your groove. Now what I wanted to do was get this pitch down here to meet up with this here. So it looks like it's just one continuous piece. So it's pretty darn close. Like I said, I shortened it up and hopefully you can see this. I'm not sure if you can or not. But there's a distinct groove right here that it steps up and goes to the back of the mouthpiece. So it didn't turn out bad. I mean, I mean, I've never made that lip before, so it didn't turn out too bad. I got the mouthpiece all done. So it's basically done. It's ready for sanding. Uh, this wood's not as hard as I thought it was. So basically, I can manipulate a little bit more with the sandpaper. So now I'm going to hit it with some 120, 400. And I think I'll go to about 900. That's probably it. I'm not sure I'm going to stain it or oil it, but there's not a whole lot of character in this wood, so I might have to stain it. But that's basically it. You can always take a propane torch. Put it on there and turn it slowly as you go try not to burn the whole thing but what you're trying to do is get a burn on what character there is so therefore it'll stand out a little bit more and then when you put your finish on it it'll come through all right so there you have it in true fashion i didn't bring an insert with me so i can't show you what the whole thing looks like but just in a matter of a few minutes take your time give it a try try different things i've never made this design before you just keep going and sometimes when you make a mistake it turns out to be a good thing. So I kind of like this design. I got some wood here with some nice character to it. I might just try it on there and see what I can get out of it. But there you go. Hop in the shop. It's a $120 lathe from Canadian Tire. The tools are from Harbor Freight. And you make your own duck calls. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all got something out of that. Uh, even if it's not duck calls you want to make. You can make bowls. You can make turkey calls. I may do that next time. I'll make you a turkey pot call. How's that? See you on the next one. Oh, hey, remember, subscribe, please. Hit the subscribe button. We need some help. Thank you very much. And as always, don't forget to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. Later.
Wait, wait.